Hey everyone, I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. This is Steve coming back with another video. Um, so this one I'm going to basically take a track back in time. I came across a video that I was going to share at one time, but I decided not to because I couldn't get the device working. But anyways, I figured I could probably post this video if somebody knows a little bit more about the Zoom floppy than I do after I spent a lot of crazy, doing a lot of crazy stuff with drivers and trying to get this thing working. I just thought I'd throw it out there for people to kind of look, but i still really going to go with the 1541 Ultimate 2. <clears throat> I'm convinced that's the best direction to go right now. So, here comes the video. Okay, so we're back, and I wanted to show you the Zoom Floppy up close there. I had to redo this because the lighting was bad on the other one, so I'm going to redo everything here. Uh, first, we got this uh, plug right over here next to the LED. You see this right there? That's called the IEC port serial, and that's what plugs directly into the disk drive, the Commodore 64 disk drive. Then we got this uh, mini USB plug. Um, I'll unplug this just for a minute to show you what it looks like, if you can see that right there. Um, and to see what it looks like there. You can get those um, at the regular electronic stores, and it just plugs right back into the, the unit like that. And then right next to this, we have what's called the Parallel DB15 port. Um, I believe this is the one that goes out to the, um, it's, a, it's a parallel connector. It's got like the male and the females on it. Um, on the back here, you can see the board here a little more up close. Um, how to hold it like that, see that's something better. Okay, so this right here in the center, this is called the Parallel Header. This one here is the IEE488 header. No, I'm sorry, this is the expansion bus. I'm looking at the other one. This is the IEE 488 header. And then this one here on the end is the IEE 488 plug. Um, I guess there's different things you could plug into it. I don't know. This one right here is not listed, but I believe this is the parallel card edge. No, no, that's, that's down here, actually. This one's not listed on it, but this one could plug into the old uh, printer ports here. Got to watch my camera. I didn't realize it went out of range there. So... Hopefully you can see that all. I'll show you the board a little up close there. You can kind of see it there. Pretty good fine resolution. And then we'll look at it this way up close. You can kind of see what it looks like there. As I'm holding it. And you can see the plugs and everything. See how the Commodore 64 plug looks normal. Okay, so we'll skip over to the next part of the video. Okay, so the next part of the video, I wanted to show you the website. This is the website that where you can um, download it there. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but it's uh, go4retro.com slash products slash zoom floppy. And this is um, a picture of it and what it looks like. And then you just go through this introduction here. Now, it's in smaller print, so I just use the shift and the middle mouse to kind of enlarge it there a little bit. If you go down right here in the second, was one, two, third, third category down, right here where it says designer Nate Lawson has provided a convenient installation manual, just click on that little link there for manual, and it'll open up the PDF document. This is an easier way to step by step, and this is where I was reading all of my stuff from earlier, from the manual. So you'll have the owner's manual there, and then I'm going to go back here. Right next to it, there's a little, it really says after menu, it says and package. You want to click on that. And what it's going to do is down here at the bottom, it's going to install the actual OpenCBM operating system. I'm sorry, the OpenCBM tool that you use to run Zoom, Zoom Floppy with. And you can see it under my folders right here is where it downloaded to. And this is it, OpenCBM Floppy Disk. Let me zoom in on this a little bit more. Hopefully you can see all that there. Okay, so this is um, the folder. And what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate next on installing it. And we're going to, this is the directory we're going to point it to. This is the Windows drivers where you're going to install the Zoom Floppy to. We're just going to be able to recognize the drivers and stuff like that. Now, I'm going to show you something else here for a second. I'm using Windows 10 here, so what you're going to do is you'll want to get to the device manager here and just go to uh, I'm going to go back here just go back to control panel or you can go down to start menu here at the bottom I'll have to move back a little bit more here you're not going to see that otherwise 
I wanted to move to a screen version, but it takes too long to convert stuff. But anyway, so I'm down here at the bottom. Just type in Control if you're using Windows 10, and it'll pop up in a control panel like that, and you'll see it right there. And I'll just do it from here. So to move this in again a little bit so you can see it a little bit better there again. Right here, um, you want to go to the section that says System. So hopefully that was showing up on the screen there. Let me see. I keep forgetting my camera lens is over here. So, so anyways, you want to go to System down here. Click on that. And then next, you're going to click on Device Manager at the top here. And that's going to open up the Device Manager. Now, you'll see it appear right here. Um, now, if you don't plug it in for the first time, it won't show up here. It'll just be, like, if I unplug it right now, it might might disappear or it might not. Um, oh, let me see. Yeah, see, it disappeared there. And all you see now is a serial ATA controller. So as soon as you plug it in again, it recognizes that you plug it in. And the Zoom floppy will instantly appear there. The, the, um, the Zoom 1541 floppy adapter, excuse me, the adapter will appear there. So I didn't see that notated in any other video, but I thought that that would be important. There's not a good video on YouTube, but it's kind of an older video, and the camera angles are really bad. So I'm using a more still camera, so it should be a little bit better here. So we'll move on to the next step here. I'll pause for a second. Okay, so we're back. And the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to go right here on the floppy adapter. We're going to right-click it there, and we're going to select Properties. And you'll see the task for General Driver Details Events. All we really need to do is focus on this because we're going to be updating this driver. Uh, for Windows 10, you'll see the options to search automatically, but we don't want to do that. We want to browse to the computer where it's located. Now, it's already defaulted here, but I want to show you where I got mine to. What I did is I just installed my folder directly on the C drive here. So if you go to the C drive here, and maybe I'll open this up to show you this over here a little bit. No, oh, actually, let me just... Um, I already have it open right here, actually. So if you go here to the Explorer, you'll see it. Um, I still, so if I go to the downloads, it'll more than likely when you download, it's going to appear in your download here. And you have to unzip it and everything. So make sure to go ahead and unzip it or extract it to where you want it to go to. And for this, you would want to put it toward your C drive. That's basically what I did here. So mine is located right here under the C drive. And when you go to the C drive, it's under Open CBM. So what we're doing is we're downloading Open CBM, which is going to the utility we're going to be able to use to start downloading our files and stuff like that. And then you'll see it right here under Open CBM floppy. You know, after we downloaded it, it'll be right here in Win DRV drivers, and this is where we're going to install the drivers to basically. And that's the next step we're going to do right here. We've got the right area location there, and we're just basically going to hit Next. And it'll start. Now, mine installed it earlier, so you'll see probably a little install icon moving across the screen, you know, while it's installing. You can see it says Windows found driver software for your device but encountered an error while attempting to install it. The third party does not contain digital signature information. So you can go ahead. Um, on this one, I'll probably have to do it as um, administrator or something like that. So I'm going to pause this video for a second. Okay, so I'm back. Earlier when I tried to install this, you may get this error. I did. Windows found driver software for your device but encountered an error while attempting to install it. Um, so the third party INF does not contain digital signature information. So basically, Windows is uh, not installing this for security reasons. So one thing I did notice here is I went, um, the next thing this, okay, so the next thing you need to do before I forget that is you need to go to the folder here and there's a file you can actually run that to test it. Um, I can find the right folder here. Right here. It's called uh, firmware-update. And when you run this, you're going to get this error message. This is where I kind of started tracing it. It says the program can't start because LI... LIBUSB0 DLL is missing from your computer. So basically it's saying the DLL, I'm sorry, the USB software is not installed and we need to fix it. So some something encountered an issue when Windows was trying to install that into your computer. So I did a search on the internet here and basically I just went down here and I typed in the name of the driver for one thing. You can do it with or record inside. If you're using Windows 10, 
Cortana will help you find it. I just did LIB, USB, and it pops right up there under web. It'll say USB zero. Let me just move this over some more. It says right there, USB zero DLL is missing and you just click on it there. And it'll take you to some search options for it. I found one right here. I think it's this one. It's some kind of um, updated software for a DLL fixer. So I'm going to try running that and I'll get right back with you guys here in a second. Okay, so we're back and I um, went to that uh, center section here. It's called the Fix One Free. And this is supposed to solve the issue. So basically you just go here and you click download USB driver. And you'll see it, uh, the percentage at the bottom. It'll stall down here. And then down here, you can open it. You can run it right here. And then we're going to go ahead and try to fix this with this software. It says it's Kapersky trusted, so I think we'll be okay on any viruses issues. Okay, gave me a thank you screen. Try to see if it was doing anything else. Okay, it's fixing the problem. It's recommended some kind of installation, install recommended. So I guess we're just gonna click on that. Was successfully installed on your computer. So now it started um, I don't know what this is doing. Let's do a second of a search here. I'm going to pause it while it searches here. It looks like it's scanning for that DLL, so it might take a moment here. Okay, so we're back with the scan completed. <laughs> it said there was 542 registry errors found. But I think this is if you want to use their software, but I'm not going to really continue with this unless I need to. Uh, the whole purpose was to install this DLL file. Now we're going to go ahead and pause again here. We're going to go test it to see if it fixed that driver issue. Okay, I think there was some third-party software on the screen. Okay, so apparently it's right here. It's set up DLL files fixer. So if we hit next here, it'll install it to the computer here. Whoops. So right there, it's going to install the DLL. It's a little bit misleading. It may have installed it earlier, but we're going to go ahead. It seems to stay on the screen the whole time. Anyways, it should have installed it, so I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this, and we'll go check it here. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, <clears throat> what I had to do for some reason, this does not want to work on Windows 10. So what I did is I booted up my laptop, which I have here in front of me, and I got it to work. The driver is now successfully installed, but I had to use my um, Windows 7 version on my laptop to get it to work. So we'll, we'll kind of move forward from here. So if you are using Windows 10, um, I'd recommend if you have a backup copy of Windows uh, 7 to do it that way, you know, maybe on a partition drive or however you want to do it. Um, there might be some update that's required for Windows 10, but I'm not going to go through the trouble of figuring it out. All I know is it worked here and I'm going to move forward. Okay, guys, I'm back. What I'm going to show you is how I have this running. Um, if you can see over here on my laptop, I have it basically plugged in this cord right here which is plugged into the, the, the USB is plugged into the zip, the, the zoom floppy. And if you go over down here, I kind of set it on a little place here. You can see the zoom floppy cable is plugged right into the USB. And then uh, the Commodore 64 IE or IE whatever drive is connected directly to the zoom floppy. And over there, you can see it's connected directly to the disk drive. I'll step over there for a minute and show you. So it's basically... It's connected to the back like that, connected down to the zip drive, to the zoom floppy can be going to the zip drive. So, we're going to go ahead and uh, test this out, and we'll see how this goes, okay? I'm going to pause this for now.
Okay, guys, I forgot one step. On the laptop, there's a test you can do to make sure that the Zoom floppy is installed correctly um, and the driver is going to run successfully. So I'm going to go over the back to my laptop here. Okay, so I'm going to go to the folder, which is right here I installed. And it's called, I don't know if you can see, it's called firmware-update. You just click on it. And I guess that wasn't the one. Let me see. Oh, give me one second here. Okay, so actually, early, I'm back. I forgot I did this earlier. I had to go ahead and click on this install inside of the Open CBM once you download it. And it'll do this. And it'll install the, um, the necessary files to get this working correctly. And then you just go back to Firmware Update now. And it says Finding and Preparing Device for Update. Note device has version 7, but firmware is not newer, version 7. Add the FLAG if you really have the right firmware and press any key to continue. And it says you can test it with the run test. You should see your your drive detected above, but not please see the zoom floppy for troubleshooting tips. So there might be something more I need to do here. Give me a second here. Okay, so it's taking some troubleshooting. Uh, apparently, what I realized is my 154041 drive wasn't even turned on. I was trying to figure out why it wasn't detecting it. And I happened to look over there, I was like, it was never turned on. So, if it doesn't see it, then it's not going to be able to do it. That's why the tests were failing here. So, if I go here, excuse me, if I go to the run test now, it'll start scanning it. Previous cameras interrupted resetting. So, this will probably take a moment, so I'm going to pause here.